Oh, what a mess. Oh, thank goodness no one can see my disc. Alrighty. Hey, 3X. Looks like you're the first person here. Let's see if anyone else turns up. Uh, YouTube seems to think nobody. Morning, Lisa. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to go through the whole pains of the audio configuration again because I have changed back to my Lenovo laptop. A Fixit Pro and Trinity MDR. So if you guys can be a um, thumbs up or down for what the audio is like, that'd be great. Unfortunately, the settings are different on this compared to the um, MacBook. Hey Joshua. Hey Jacob Mirzada. I'm not sure if I got that name right. Mm -hmm. Audio is okay. Alright, that's a good sign. Hello from Denmark. Oh, Denmark's a nice place. And uh, looks like my hair is falling in my face pretty bad. I should have uh, got a haircut, but I didn't. But anyway. Alright, well, basically, this is going to be the uh, first sort of live stream done with the microscope camera. So I don't know how we're going to go with this. I was going through my pile of trash, and I've got an iPhone 5 here that was water damaged about two years ago. And at the time, there wasn't anything I could do with it, so I just put it into my archive pile. And I thought I'd give it a shot and see what we can do with it tonight. Alright, audio's good. All right. ah, except when the uh, transmitter falls off. Ah. Crikey. Yeah, this, this thing has a really good strong clip on the back, but... Um, it's still not, for some reason, sort of practical to have lying around. I kind of need a clip on the back of my neck or something for it. I might just put it over here for now. Cable's long enough. Lukas Niznik from Poland. We're getting everybody from all over Europe here. That's good. Alright. So hopefully the... Um, Focus is good enough for you guys. Let's see. It seems to be alright. Unfortunately, my screen resolution isn't good enough for me to detect if my camera is synchronized with my focus. So, uh, so well, the first thing I can see is, you know, obviously the liquid damage marker is well and truly stuffed. Don't care about that. So we've got damage down here. And that's corroded off. That's just a test point from what I understand. Uh, it's got a bit of trash up here. I should probably take these shields off too. I'll pull it up. It looks like the damage is not around here on the display and uh, touch connectors, thankfully. Mm, that is a wayward hair from somewhere. I've got some more corrosion up here and the marker. So I don't know what this was corroded with. I don't know what sort of liquid it was in. Um, yeah, this is like I said two years ago. It's a bit hard to tell. Um, so I think probably the first thing I should do is get those shields off and have a look and see what's going on underneath there. Yeah. yeah, for getting the shields off with my hot air, I'm usually at around about, uh, usually around about 420, 410 degrees centigrade. Yep, and 
40 odd percent air is pretty good. So have we lost the stream or are we still good? Stream's still good? Okay. Surprising I'm only using about 22% CPU. So and you're not really gonna see much of me getting these shields off. Uh maybe later I'll get a third camera. A sort of a one that you can see what's going on. Alright. Hot air, try not to burn my face. That's always a good sign. Nope, these are the wrong tweezers. I don't normally do it this way, I don't normally do it under the microscope camera. And they're definitely not the right tweezers for what I want to do. And I don't know where my right tweezers are. Oh. Hey Mike. Tired techie. Just gotta go find my tweezers. Come on. Uh, I think I'll probably move the uh I'll probably move the laptop to be up in front of here so I can read the chat and whatnot while I'm doing this. Uh, I'm gonna have to move the camera out of the way, I'm sorry, so you're not gonna get much of a view on this. So anyway I can do it. Yeah, all you get to see is the camera. I'm sorry it's been a long time since I've been on the uh, live streams. It's just been a lot of stuff going on around here. I think I might have to put the heat up on this one. Normally with the 5C and 5S, they drop off pretty quick. This one's feeling a little reluctant. Probably because I forgot to take the plastic edge strip off. Yeah, there you go, but you're doing it all wrong. Come on. Now, botch that up a little bit. I think I left the plastic strip on. And I did. Okay. Now we got the other shield off. Wrong one. Yeah, you can see that uh, little bit of plastic. Well, that shouldn't have affected it, actually, not on this one. On the 5C and the 5S, you've got to take these off. Yeah, that shouldn't have affected anything. Oh, well. Never can find the right tools when you need them, yeah, unless you've got six of them. Yep. Hey, fixing things? At least you're live streaming, too nervous to live stream. Uh, yeah. It is one of those things where you sort of have to accept that you're going to 
probably completely botch everything up. Ow. I mean, you don't want to, but it happens. <laughs> no, let's try to get this off. Get this off so at least I can... I know you guys can't see anything, but... Yeah, I need to buy another one of these Logitech 922 cams. Because they're good, they work well in Linux. Well, they work well on everything. And they're pretty cheap compared to, yeah, for the quality that they deliver. I can feel this thing, like, pulling away. It's going tick, 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 tick. It's just not letting go. There we go. I just had to complain that it wasn't letting go for it to let go. Okay, let's get that back in focus. Okay. Put the camera behind a mirror. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good idea. Stop people uh, getting worried about things. All right, I'm just going to put this into my board holder. The with the iPhone fives, I can't get a. Um, dedicated holder like uh, like you know you get these dedicated holders but uh with the five i've just got to use the generic holder which i'm fine with mm, come on. i seem to recall this one actually has a short on it as soon as i put power into it I'm gonna pull. Come on, come over here. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh god. No wonder there's a short. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Uh, let's see the camera. Get it centered. I'm just trying to think, I'm just going to move the camera shot over a bit. I like that. Okay. So, let's see, in my vision, the corroded inductor should be in the middle. So, sort of... Anyway, about that, that's close enough. Yep. Hey, World Tech Fix. So what's the, I can't really tell from this screen here, pardon me, um, what's the quality of the microscope camera like for you guys? Oh man, this is, yeah, this is going to be fun. This is only running off USB at the moment, the camera will provide HDMI output at 60 frames per second at uh, 1080p but until I get myself a HDMI capture facility that's not going to be happening it's kind of curious to see what corrosion is going to persist And what's superficial? Okay, I'm just clearing that off. Good visual, no blurriness. Oh, that's good. Because you guys paid a bunch of money for this camera. Um, the camera itself was about 350 delivered. And then I had an absolute, absolute flippin' nightmare with the adapter on this. Uh, let's see if I can swing it into view. Yeah, you actually, you can see it. Um, this middle piece here, that was a nightmare to get sorted out. Uh, because Amscope changed the design on their head, previously there was a threaded insert. Um, actually, I'll go f grab it and show you guys. Where are my optical 
try and here we go. Where is it? All right. Okay, this here is what used to be supplied on Amscope um, trinocular heads, whether they be simul focal or otherwise. Um, it's just a typical sort of prism, split mirror prism, whatever. And the main thing is it's got a threaded insert here. Whereas the new... Amscope ones don't have threads. It's just a uh, larger, open, um, threadless sort of setup, and you've just got one grub screw that holds in the dovetail. Now, I bought myself an adapter, a 0.35 adapter, which is this contraption here, which gives you a decent field of view with this particular camera because this camera has a one third inch uh, sensor. And yeah, so this one here has got a threaded base. Now the problem was, even though this matches that other insert, I bought that insert separately. Um, the prism, the location of the prism vertically is different to what is set up in the microscope head. So I was only getting like 25% uh, of the actual image and the rest, 75% of the camera was um, just looking at the sidewalls of the insides of the microscope. So it was no good. So it was a bunch of running around and stuffery and whatnot. Uh, lesson learned. Fortunately, now the people who sell this particular camera sell the adapter as well and they know specifically it's for Amscope and it's just beautiful. It works straight. That You'll notice that there's no if you look across the span of the um, captured image, there's no focus drift. Like um, if you look at some other people's, on one side it'll be in focus and then on the other side it'll be drifting out of focus. So, did you end up with a different cam than what came with the scope? Chuck, I didn't buy a camera with this scope. I was planning on it. I was going to get one of those uh, 5 megabit USB 3 ones, but um, a lot of people put forward some serious money for me and I ended up going with this particular one here which has got the Sony sensor in it and I gotta admit I'm glad that we went for that it's definitely a vastly superior camera at least from what I can see here yeah, it doesn't seem to oh what are you? I actually don't know what this section... Anyone want to tell me what this section up here is? Not exactly sure. We'll just mark you to say that's where you... And there's stuff there. Stuff there. Hmm. I don't know my way around the 5s at the moment very well. The 5S, the 5C, the 6 and such I don't have any problems with. Well, at least not too bad. But um, the 5... We don't really do a lot of work with the 5s anymore. Funnily enough, I do more work on the 4S and the 4 than I do the 5. The 5 has become kind of the uh, orphan child of repairs. No one really wants to deal with it. And I can understand why it's um, got a fair bit of the... It loves its underfill. To be fair, it's not as bad as the 4S. The 4S is a complete nightmare so far as underfill goes. But at least um, with the 4S, a lot of the faults. Oop, thank you very much. A lot of the faults tend to be on up in this sort of area, uh, so you don't really end up needing to go into the underfield much. Although to be fair, the 4S does have a bad tendency of having PMIC errors, power management chip errors, and I don't know. Has anyone successfully done a power? management IC on a 4S without going insane. I tried a couple just for the fun of it and that didn't work out so well. And we've got corrosion under the under here. That's the compass IC which seems to be particularly popular for getting corrosion.
Yeah, Chuck. Um, yeah, I, I was planning on getting the five. Yeah, and uh, it was Chris Long that said to me, he "says Oh, you're probably better off not getting those cameras. They're pretty useless." And you see, I was only originally planning on spending ninety nine dollars or so on a camera because I didn't think I was going to be doing any real live stream stuff for with the camera, at least not immediately. But uh, yeah, but then quite a few people fronted up some money, and well, it was able to happen. Alright, well, I should check to see if I got a short on this. So, where is the multimeter? Grab the transmitter pool. Come on, come on. Ah. Long distance stretch. Maybe I'm focusing in a particular area, zoom in if possible, without losing any quality. The only thing I've got to say is, um, this is an autofocus, so I do tend to notice that when you zoom in, the camera, the camera doesn't um, track true with its focus, not as close as I want. So I'll do a zoom in on something here. So. Okay, obviously that's out of focus. Like to me that's dead set focus. Now I suppose it's not too far off for you guys. I suppose it's tolerable. This has got the 0.7 Barlow on it. Which I find is a really good combination. Okay. What have we got? Four one four. We got about a hundred ohms on that. This seems a little over the top, uh, a little low. I'm not sure. I normally expect it to be a little bit higher for something that's off like that. And I see we've got one more shield to get rid of here. And my hot air has gone cold. And I'm out of practice of doing live streams. That I see near the rear cam connector is the gyro. Um, okay, hang on. This one here you're talking about? Oops. That one there. Um, well, take. I always thought that was the compass I see, which is why we have the. Um, non-magnetic screw up here or are you talking about this one here being the gyro whoops you can't see that this one here you can see there's corrosion under there too maybe I'll have to put this through the uh, ultrasonic before I do much well, get that second shield off anyway yeah I think another camera would be nice to get an overview of the workspace but obviously not um, Okay, we'll get this out of the way. It seems no matter what I do, there's always something else to improve on. I haven't even had a chance to set up my website yet so that it can uh, start accepting soldering jobs for things like Tri-Stars. Well, I, I get plenty of Tri-Star jobs just with the local community, but at some point they're probably going to run out. Boom. There you go. Let's see if this is too hot to handle. Ouch. Yes. Well, it looks like that was pretty much just the CPU area. There's that there. Bottom side, rear can connector. Hey, Mac Vision 3D. 
Uh, Lisa, you trying to do the same thing, set up so that you can take jobs, get mail in jobs and things like that? Uh, let's let's put some power on this and uh, see what craziness ensures. Get my octopus lead. Um, let's see. Let's set the current down to 1.2 amps, 4.2 volts. 5s, 5, 5. Natural, the, God damn, these connectors suck on the five. On the octopus, we'll have to change that. Alright, let's just power on and see what happens. We have gone straight to current limit and it's turned off. So we have a dead short, which is good. Much prefer having dead short faults. What is wrong with this? Con this connector is botched. What's wrong with it? Uh, I can already see there's issues there. Oh wow, that's not even soldered down. Check it out. I oh, better make sure that's off. Look at that. It's not soldered. It's barely soldered. <laughs> that's definitely not soldered, that's a positive. Probably explains why it's not really... Oh wow, that's that's just free floating. Huh. I wonder if I can get a better connector maybe. Hey Crudge, yeah, late one. Alright, let's try and fix up my octopus lead. Okay. 5G, I need an iPhone 5 battery. Do I have an iPhone 5 battery? Uh, and more importantly, is it one that's an original? Okay, I've got an iPhone 5 2017. That's definitely not an original iPhone 5 battery. Let's see if we've got one in this box of terrors. No battery, no battery, no battery. Oh, great. Someone's been sensible and hasn't... I haven't left any batteries in my containers of iPhones. Okay, we've got a damaged battery here, it's from 2012, so there's actually a chance that might be an original. We'll get that off, try to put it on our... Yeah, damn, I should have got my wife to give me a haircut before I do all this. Which has been telling me I need a haircut for ages and I've just been like, yeah, 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 yeah. And now I'm suffering for it. Tiny amount of flux, not a lot, just enough to make it willing to let go when the time is right. <sighs> Drop the temperature. And make sure I don't short out the connectors when picking them up. I shouldn't do because you got ground here, positive here usually.
Good. Nice. Didn't botch it up. Just sold a wire VCC main, use the alligator. Well, I could, but then the thing is I want to use this over and over. So at least if I do it now, I don't have to do it again. Come here. Come here, you little rascal. Okay, that's good. I've also been having to retrain myself. Uh, for a little while there, I was using my equipment as a right-handed configuration. Funnily enough, because for whatever reason, I thought Lewis had set his up as a right-handed person, but now that I've looked at things, I think he's actually left. And so I did a reverse of whatever he was doing, and that was wrong. This is going to take a little longer because it's on the circuit board. The FPCs are much easier to get off. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. I'm up with that into the into the clamp. The clamps. So future armor people will know that one. Oh, are there any uh, Rick and Morty fans out here? Yeah, I saw Rick and Morty on Netflix for quite a while, and that crazy drug and juice style of uh, artwork kind of put me off for a fair while. But then I was bored one night, and I thought, oh, well, I'll just watch it, see what it's like. Anyway, long story short, I became an addict, and now I just watch Rick and Morty. Hey Mike, good to see you. Need to bypass the transistor from VVAT to VCC and not getting cooked by the high current. Well, we've got to see where that uh, short is to start with. I'm just going to tin these up and... I'm not going to be hot airing this back on because I was lucky enough that I didn't ruin that connector Getting it off. Beautiful. Never saw Rick and Marty, uh, Morty. Oh, God. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of those things that I've got to tell you, the first couple of episodes I found a little bit too much. Uh, like with the... I mean, I know what they were trying to push, but I was glad they toned down the whole constant drunkenness and dribbling and stuff like that. But when it actually gets into the intricate, sciencey sort of stuff, then it's fun. And plus, of course, Sarah Chalk um, voices the mother. And for those of you who aren't sure who Sarah Chalk is, that's Elliot out of Scrubs. What am I doing? I've been an idiot here. Turn the workpiece. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm being stupid. Not used to you doing these connectors with the J tip. There we go. 
it's just not getting enough heat on that surface. Come on. Normally I use a chisel tip with these. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, let it get hot. Right, yeah, then bring the soil. No. Okay, that's going to tick me off. Something really fierce. So the trouble with the JSO2 tip is that it's great for the microelectronics with the tip, but when you're trying to put down a good amount of heat on a normal size thing, there we go, finally. Blimey heck. You can test your patience. There we go. Marvellous. I don't think I'll bother with the end mechanical supports. They can take a hike. Yep. Yeah, I watched the Star Trek Discovery thing as well last night. Um, I thought the first 10 minutes was a bit weird when they're on the planet. The dialogue felt, I don't know, just odd. But then they got themselves sorted out. I know a few people aren't too happy about the whole appearance of the Klingons. I gotta admit, I'm not, I'm not a Trekkie, so for me it hasn't really offended me in any way. I did notice they looked different, but I was like, oh, okay, they look different. Do not tell me I'll put that in upside down. Did I put that upside down? You son of a... Put the connector on backwards. God damn. Anyone want to put money on me melting this? So flood it with flux and hopefully we can thankfully I didn't put those anchor pins down <sighs> what a pain in the posterior we're going for focus there Come on. Oh, I got lucky. Ah, right, g'day Paul. Good to see you. Alright, well we got lucky there. We didn't deform it. I kept the temperature low on the hot air. That's only down at, that's at 390. And only 39 air. And of course it helped that it's leaded solder. Hey Rave TCO. No, well Rave, no problems. This is actually the first um, stream I've had in a long time. In fact, yes, Paul, now that you're here, yeah, you're here for the first live stream with the camera. I'm sorry it's not 1080p, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. I 
Now with this dead short, I'm going to... I should only have to just put alcohol on the board and it should show up. I'm actually going to limit the voltage. Actually no, I'll limit the current down to 600. Uh, 500 even. 500 milliamps at 4.2 volts. That's assuming it gets 4.2 through it. That's still 2 watts. Let's have a look at what it pushes through. Uh, let's see, 1 volt, half amp, so okay, we've got 500 milliamps. We'll push the current up a bit more. There we go, 800 milliamps. Let's see if we can find this. At 800 milliamps, it should show up pretty quick. Uh, it's probably on the other side of the board. Alright. So Paul, how's your back going? It seems to be the never-ending saga in your life. Hopefully things are getting sorted out for you. Ah, what do I do? Gotta wear a hairnet now? Yeah, oh great, I just put flux through my hair. I just realised I'm not wearing gloves. Okay, here we go. Showing anything obvious. I've got 800 milliwatts of power going in. When was the camera? We've got a little bit of a, a little bit of heat here, and then sort of spinning out. But that's more probably evaporation, I'd say. I should take that camera off. Sometimes the cameras I've seen can short out. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's still shorted. Uh, well, Tech, I have found shorts on these boards with as little as 250 milliwatts. So, um, I think it, it depends also where it is, I guess. Like, if it's on a fat ground plane or whatever then yeah okay it, it's going to be harder but you know I like to start at something reasonable like one watt so that I don't completely toast everything okay we're at 1.4 watts or so now and there's a few hairs in there I do have free spray if this doesn't work. See if I can just feel it.
Oh yeah, I found you. Yep, I found you. <laughs> Ow. The pain. Where? It's weird, guys. Pretty sure I know where it is. Yeah, let's have some fun. We'll point out free spray here in Australia in this area of the world is does not give you a very long working time. There we go. Gotcha. What are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's all right. It, it didn't go all the way through, thankfully. I think the worst I've ever done is um, I was doing a switch mode power supply and I had some TO220 MOSFETs. And I had one wired up wrong and it was taking a full couple of amps through it and whatnot. And I just grabbed that thing because I was like, I was testing to see if it was working or not. And by God, yeah, it worked. It left a nice imprint on my finger for quite a while. Alright, so let's see what that um, that little part is. And by see what it is, I mean remove it. Okay, you're off. Yep. I'm going to need more heat for this. Okay. 420, 42%. I'm glad I changed that connector on the octopus lead because it made it a lot easier to move this thing around now. I actually, yeah. I haven't got my ZXW set up on my laptop. Is this underfilled? Are you underfilled? You are too. I almost didn't see that. Time to zoom in. The danger of not zooming in. Not that it would have really mattered. It just would have not come off. Oh, come on, don't move. RF burns? Uh, yeah, I'll leave you to those. I've seen some people with them. I didn't like what I saw. So yeah, you can keep those RF burns. They're a little too close to ionizing radiation burns for my liking. I mean, I know they're not, but... So if someone's got um, the schematic or board view or something, you want to tell me what this chip is? So I really don't want to have to go back to the other room. I will get it set up. It's just I need a bigger screen for this laptop to do it. Well, I just need to... I've got a new system I'm ordering. And I can smell the neighbours smoking. Yeah, I'll use my favourite tweezers. These are now my favourite tweezers. Um, they're sort of an odd shape little chaps. But uh, I think normally you're supposed to use them in this orientation. But I find for snaking out tri-stars and things like that from under shields, working and using them like this, it's really... I love it. And they also have pretty good fine tips. 
bypass q4 gets cooked trying to pass v bat yeah i saw you put that there before world tech unfortunately in this case it um took everything but like i said i want to know what this is without me going to the other room to find out This under feels quite... there we go. That's what I wanted. Alright, now we can get it off. That's not good. We've got solder coming out. Ah, oh, jeez. Alright. Guess we made a mistake. See all this underfill here? I mean, I know it's only the crystal, but... I might get away, but I'm probably going to have to clear that back. No, nope, that's not good. Probably going to have to clear that back and check out all the parts under that. This is my favourite shield. This is my. There we go. A bit late now. The horse is already bolted, but uh, no, worth a shot. Come on. What the hell's going on here? There we go. Oh, that's what was going on. This stuff. Lisa, yeah, it's a, um, that is Q4, transistor supplies, oh, right, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, it's just an iPhone 5, it's a very old one. It's one that was in my, it was just one that was in my completely dead pile, no one's laid claim to it after, I just sort of said to him, well, I can't get your data off, and this was two years ago. And they weren't interested in sending it off anywhere at that time. And they said, nah, we're just going to ignore it. And they left it here and that was it. I've got a theory that I think Apple is reducing the amount of underfill under these things because they want to be able to service them themselves and offer them back out as refurbished. Because if you compare the 4S where they essentially drown the whole damn thing in underfill to the 6S where there's very little underfill at all. In comparison anyway. I mean obviously things like the CPU and NAND have but for most of the other parts, it seems like they've given up. Oh, that, or they've got a different construction technique that they like. Yeah, come on. Well... I have a feeling, well, it's entirely possible that Q4 was the short. I mean, I'm not saying it 
is, I'm saying it could be. There was a little bit of corrosion. Oh, yep. And also, even if it was transferring all the current, um, the MOSFET shouldn't get that hot. Now, I'm a little worried about that crystal. I'm not sure how important that is. Anyway. We'll have a look. Yeah, let's see, cool it down. By the way, if you're watching this thinking you're going to learn something, don't. Um, I'm just stuffing around with an old piece of equipment. Yeah. I'll do a TriStar one another day. At least then it, I won't look quite so incompetent. Joshua, it's an iPhone 5. Alright. Okay, I'm setting down to 200 milliamps. Theoretically, it shouldn't do anything, but. Oh, interesting. It's still drawing to. It's still drawing a full short. If I any of those pins there. And looks like a tiny amount of um, corrosion in that middle pin there. light on this. There you can you see that? Yeah the thing is well text when uh, we put power through this is what cooked up. No the actual component cooked up. But let's see is this overblown? It's a bit hard to see, but I can see the telltale, or well, it looks like. Is that, is that any better? Yeah, we're out of focus. Just too zoomed in. On that middle ball, just around the perimeter, and also up here on this one and this one, there is corrosion, or it looks like corrosion. So yeah, we'll, we'll uh, try the free spray again for the comic effect. And see what we can come up with. We'll put the current up. Eight hundred milliamps is gonna be fine. Yeah, well tech, did you see it though? I mean it cooked up straight away, and if it's a MOSFET um, even if you short them, oh, well, I suppose if you short, or oh, whatever. Anyway, let's let's just go with this for fun. Oh yeah, power on. Okay, we've got a little cap off the side here. I think it was that. It's just too hot. Welcome to the tropics. Oh. Okay, we're frosted. There we go. And that's I'm guessing that's the PMIC. Oh well. Something just burnt then and I think it was me. Still, at least then it lets you find the actual short. But um, given that that short's happening right about in there, I'd say we're not going to bother. So it's the end of the road for that. And I can see 
well, you can see there's all the corrosion under here too. So, I didn't have high hopes for this. I mean, it has been sitting and, um, what could you say, rotting for the last two years. So there's no great surprise. We could put it through the ultrasonic. I don't think that's going to really help much. Oh, well. Hmm. So I guess the question is, should I even bother trying to get this PMIC off? I mean, I don't think I'll be putting one back on. This is just at uh, this is just at a bit over 200 degrees. Try to see if I can get that. This is a really tough underfill. What temperatures do you guys usually use for getting underfill like this out? Try not touch that circuit board. <laughs> Just take the chip off to see. Yeah, may as well. Can't see any harm in that. Ah. Just disconnect that battery. Well, at least the sim tray is on the other side, so we can hit it with a fair bit of heat. Mm. 150 to 180, and then what sort of distance? Because, I mean, that's the other... Uh, that's the other factor, isn't it? And then, of course, your airflow. I guess it's a case of lowest you can go and still be able to pick it out oh man what's happened there I see you can get a solvent for underfill, but I have a feeling that probably will end up wiping out everything else as well. Oop, God knows how carcinogenic it is. Oh, I need more heat. So that's just a top cover. Oh man. Um, can I say that this is excruciatingly boring? Ow, mother frickin' heck. Screw head of the, um, screw head of the, 
nozzle. Just touch my thumb. By the way, if this was a customer job for data, then I wouldn't be doing it on live stream. And I wouldn't be quite so gung ho, as it were. Just hacking away at it. I think it's the other thing is, yeah, when you're on live streams, you do tend to, in some ways, be more cavalier with what you're doing. Like, I, if I've got a job that I know needs to be done, and I can't just stuff it up or anything, then I pretty much don't ever do it on on a live stream. Come on, come on. There you go. So. Yeah, I'm trying to find my knife blade. It's around here somewhere. Though they're not that much thinner than these things, but yeah, they're probably just enough. I do, I did order one of those uh, underfill cutters off, I uh, can't remember where it was. Yeah, that definitely singed my thumb. Ah, oh, man, that was hot. Let's have a look at Paul's idiot thumb. No, it doesn't even look like it under here. Eh, trivial. Still got a thumb. Let's see if I can find a blade. Thin metal shims that come with the exact uh, knife to... I'll go see if I can find that knife. It's got to be around here somewhere. <laughs> Right, just kicked my molly meat up. Ah. Oh, here we go. It was there all along. Yeah, these. Now, the only thing I was wondering about with these is that these customed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, busy working on the other real stuff. Um, uh, the kick in these, the the angle they've got, I'm starting to wonder. Maybe these are actually meant for right-handed people. Uh, yeah, for right-handed people, and they could in fact be completely useless for left-handed people. So I guess we'll find out. And now uh, this is really a um, this is really a BGA surface scraper by the looks of it. It's not a corner picker. And I'll just try to slice my finger off there by being an idiot. So yeah, I've been doing a fair number of jobs under the microscope, but you know, definitely, since they are proper paying jobs, I'm not putting on live stream yet. Uh, I'll go see if I can find my number 11s. Yeah, number 11s, number 11s. Oh, here we go, bits and blades. <sighs> bought this pack of a hundred number 11s probably well it's got to be getting on 11 years ago now and I think I've used 10 this is when I was doing model aircraft all the time then we uh, uh, laser cutters came into the market and we got lazy and didn't use the X-Acto knives much anymore cause other than for some minor trimming stuff so instead of going through one every week or so it started with like one every month or two uh, alright, see how that goes broke my wireless LAN antenna connector uh, is it possible to repair it? Can't solder the plate because there is no contact. 
Alright, uh, which, um, I guess you, I guess we're gonna ask what phone, and, yeah, a million other questions. Probably should, uh, heat, Paul, heat. What I do love working under the microscope is there's so many jobs that I couldn't do before because I was like, well, there's no way I can see what I'm doing. All of a sudden, a pretty pedestrian rudimentary now. now. On the other hand, you get all these new jobs that you kind of go, geez, you know, I need, I need nano robots or something to help me get in there. I'm glad for the most part I've managed to control the worst of the shakes. Just trying not to cut into the board at all here. Like that. Yeah, I think. Have those legs ever seen daylight? No, I do my very best to make sure that this body does not see more daylight than is required to maintain an operational vitamin D level. Uh, living up here in the tropics of Australia, you're pretty much guaranteed to get skin cancer. It's just all too easy. So, yeah. The answer is no. <laughs> Probably the last time they would see um, sunlight on a regular basis was perhaps when I was at school. Now, that's a long time ago now. Alright, see if this is going to come off. I'm probably going to be lucky. Not. I was being sarcastic there, by the way. Um, and that underfill is probably going to be all the way under, like it was with Q4. These tweezers even big enough to. Yep. Well, Tech, why don't you say these things before I start try picking away at the underfill? <laughs> this is some sort of sick perversion people have of letting, leading other people down other paths. I mean, you could be right, because like the other day, um, it was a Jess I had a stream on exactly that, whereby the PMIC did pop up as a hotspot, but it ended up, it wasn't, it was, uh, what was it? I think it was a TriStar fault. I can't remember. Yeah, we could always pull the TriStar. But it was nice the way she did it because she localised what ball it was, or roughly. And then worked out from that. VCC to main, yeah. You see, that's the thing. I'm not using my brain tonight because it is. What is the time? Yeah, it's one o'clock in the morning. I'm not in the mood to using my brain right now. For me, the greater gain in all this is probably just going to simply be just more practice and stuffing around. That's it. I can hear the dogs barking. That's driving me up the wall. The other thing is I don't even have my schematics and whatnot up and running. And the other big issue is that we had corrosion running under the um, corrosion running under the PMIC as well. Stop. And we've got corrosion everywhere. I should probably just throw this into the ultrasonic and then lose all my hints since I'm not really taking any notice of them.
Oh, bloody tweezers bent. I'll have a probe around. Uh, this will be blind probing. Since I do not have my schematics and whatnot. There we go. I'm going to order a large screen so that I can put it up on the wall in front of me. And then I won't be doing stuff like this. And you're short, and you're short, and you're short. But what is your actual resistance value? Oh, I can't even hold them steady. A nice, soft zero. Okay, these are all zero ohms. Zero ohms. Yep, that's all zero. Because, I mean, yeah, obviously with things like GPU and CPU, you expect, like, anything like 20 to 30 ohms, maybe a bit less. But you really don't get zero. Uh, Uh, this cap's a bit dodgy. So, what do you want to do? Do you want to do you want to play pop the cap game? We've got three up here that are nice and dead too, but they're not shorted. In fact, yeah, they're good. You're completely shorted. You're completely shorted. Yeah, we get the idea. Yeah, uh, well, all right. I will. I'll go turn on ZXW on the other machine so I can work out which is which. <laughs> Knock off caps. Well, I was thinking about that. Uh, I was thinking this one in here in particular. Feels weak in there. It's probably not it, but there we go. Now the best thing is to make sure you rip up the track. There we go. No, no win. <laughs> Run a solar lines through the middle pads of Q4. Oh, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. I had to do this the other day with um, a 5S. Okay. So we can see up here, this is the gate pin. At least I'm 99.99999% sure that's the gate pin because it's the only one that isn't bound to anything else. So that's the one we don't really want to put any short on. Everything else, we can go to town. Thank you, Mr. Hucko. The other thing is I've got to finish my fume extractor hood. Uh, I had... Oh, just, this is not my day. I had a cabinet maker working on 
cutting out my design and unfortunately certain things happened and they have not been able to do the job for me so I'm sort of two weeks behind now on that and I'm gonna have to cut it out manually and that kind of annoys me because you know what's the point of having all this great CNC machinery tech if you can't even um oh for god's sake where's my other soldering iron I no wonder I'm using where's my Using the wrong solder. That's the uh, 0.7 mil stuff. There we go. I found five Jenga. <laughs> See how for yes. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, that was from Justice String. It was pretty amusing today, just uh, accidentally started live streaming. And uh, putting a phone call through. So you're live streaming, you don't even realize it. Okay. Um, ZX, this, um, this meter I've got does actually get me down to tenths of an ohm. It's not good enough for serious shorts, but it will tend to show you at least uh, relative distances with shorts, like whether you're right next to it or you're a couple of, you know, a centimeter or two away from it. All right. And I do have a low ohms meter. I think it was one of the things I built on live stream a while ago. But I'll be honest and say they're they're a bit of a pain to use because of the four wire Kelvin connections you need. I'm working on a much easier to use one, but like all things, this just takes time. All right, let's let's go for the pop bang. Let's see what else comes up there. Eh? Um, uh, dun, dun, dun. Jeez, point two eight volts. Coils heating up, but that could just be normal buck converting. It must be the coil. Right, let's go for freeze. Need more heat, cool. It's very hard to cool these boards down in this weather. I need a little fridge to just to um, get them started. That's frozen. That's literally frozen. Come on, flash over.
做也是可以。It's very hefty short. I'll just feel for it instead this time. See if I can burn myself again. The scary thing is when you got a board this, when you got cold like this, you can't seem to feel the heat either at the same time. Like you can be having your finger run on a hot spot and it can be burning you, but for some reason your brain will not tell you that you're burning. Just thinks it's cold. Yeah, but uh, I'm just trying to get a feel now. Annoying board leader. <laughs> I think the wires are going to heat up more than anything else. That's true when you get a really strong short. Well, when I say strong, I mean a short that basically is close to zero. Um, it won't produce a lot of heat because you need resistance to be able to convert uh, the power into heat. So all that ends up happening is you burn up everything in your wires, uh, in the interconnects and the true short just stays elusive. I'm starting to develop a spot here now. We'll take somewhere up here. It's starting to come through. I was turning it off before when I was sh um Jeez, I tell you, if this thing's... <sighs> yeah, I was turning it off before when between my freezers. You could hear me when I was pressing the... Uh, pressing the on-off button. There we go. Okay. Let's 
good. There we go. Gotcha. Hey, Amy. Uh, we've got a hard short that just showed itself right here. Oh crap, <laughs> I've forgotten. It was that one, wasn't it? <laughs> and there we go. Just above the inductor. You. No, Amy, it's an original five. I do find that interesting, yeah, because almost all of us will call the SE an iPhone 5 SE, but really it is just an SE. There's no numerical prefix on it. Come off. No. Generic board holder sometimes is a bit of a pain. Sometimes. This poor board has got to be wondering what it did wrong. It's getting frozen, cooked, everything. Come on, can you come off? Are you gonna come off? Gotcha. Yeah, you're right. I mean, about how the SE is actually more of a 6. I really do like the SE. It, I find it to be a nice phone. It seems to be dependable. And the fact that it uses the same screens as the 5S, or at least, you know, if you get the ones, the good ones, then there's no problem with them. But set my current back down to 600 and see what we're going to go see so we go hey and we've got um, no draw okay well do we want to see if this actually boots at all I guess we should I mean, it's 1.30 in the morning. Why not? I've only got work in the morning. Uh, what do we got here? Pull out my old beaten up iPhone 5 stuff. Yeah, I should do it.
But yeah, I'll add more stuff so that you, know, you can see what's going on with the power supply and everything. It's just all a case of everything has to happen bit by bit. And we, because we're so used to seeing other people like Lewis, Jessa, Jason, Chris have all their gear up and running, uh, when it comes to doing it ourselves or we jump to a new person, um, it feels strange to you kind of feel crippled because you can't see what's going on because they're only just getting started themselves now, fortunately at least I've got the microscope now so I'm very happy about that okay I'm just going to see what the if I have a sane current okay powering on no power on. Oh yeah, yeah, wait, no, yeah. 130, 150, 60, 100, 200. Come on, I want to see it. Push high. 3, 4. It's certainly going about things, so... Yeah, I think that's a good chance of beating. <laughs> yeah, it's powered up. It was pushing around about five, six hundred milliamp draw. Um, let's see if I, where's my screen for this? <coughs> I don't know how good this screen is. It could be a complete disaster. The other thing is I don't know if the um, there's a fair bit of damage up here. Let's have a look at the damage off of the connectors. Although we only need really the screen and touch. No, it's not too bad. Yeah, we might be able to might beat with that. No idea if the screen is crap or not, but <laughs> yeah, that's right, Lisa. It would be nice to just blink and have it all there. Certainly, the microscope, the um, hot air, and the soldering station being the most critical, obviously. I don't know if the screen's any good. It's probably complete crap, this one. Yeah, it doesn't like that screen. Let's go get another screen. Yeah, what have we got here? You might work. Oh, sorry guys. Multimeter, yeah. I gotta say, it is interesting for me with the multimeter situation because with my previous work, the electronics where I was doing design and all sorts of things like that, uh, having a high precision multimeter was of utmost importance uh, for testing that everything was right I mean like with the low ohms meter I needed well I've got a 50,000 count meter here and it was just barely enough to at least get me started before I sent it off to the uh, calibration standard centers right so we go. oh cracky We've got an Apple logo. Check it out. 
Uh -huh. See, they'll fix. I told you it was the PMIC all along. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few of those with the back panels removed, but I wanted to see whether it would come up on a on its own with the backlight. And we have passcode. All right. I can't even see myself at the moment. There we go. We've got a working phone. Brilliant. But I have no idea what the passcode is. Ah. Still, it's an iPhone 5. Probably running a very old iOS. I wonder if it's hackable. I've never really done the hacking thing. Uh, <sighs> So there we go. Thank you very much, World Tech. I appreciate that you slapped the um, that you slapped the soldering iron out of my hand before the hot air, rather, before I removed that PMIC. So I will. I know who owns this phone, so I will send them a message and say, you know, that phone you left me two years ago. Well, it's um, oh crap! I just. Um, so, well, it's running now, so do you want the data off it? Was there any data on it that you think you might want again? Even though they said, oh, well, you know, won't worry about it. I'll offer it up to them and they may come back around to it. <laughs> yeah, Rave. <laughs> yeah, let, let me give you some more. Let's see. Where's my fingerprint? There you go. Go wild. <laughs> No good till you have a fan spin. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've got a... My own MacBook has started to fail on me again. This is the one that was soaking in wine for a year. Um, it's doing something strange with the battery. It behaves as if it's running off the battery, but it will not charge the battery. Um, it, it could just be a bad battery because there's a lot of corrosion in the daughter board that's actually contained in the battery uh, system itself. It's not part of the main board. <laughs> but with that particular MacBook, it's one of those ones where you, the battery's all just stuck down with um, adhesive. So it runs for now when it's running off the power brick. It just behaves a little differently. Like it'll shut down because it thinks it's on a battery and it'll think it needs to go to sleep and things like that. Uh, yeah, well. Hey, Elfia. Tell them you put it in rice for three months and it's picked. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. They'll set a bad precinct. Uh, well. well, no, this is good. Um, I'm really happy. I'll just pop that off now. Considering this was the first live stream with the microscope, I mean, obviously I know that we've. I did another earlier video with the microscope. But this being a live stream, it was particularly nice to have a win like that. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have quite a few more. But uh, I'll see if I can get the passcode. What's probably going to happen is the person will go, Oh, yeah, actually, you know, maybe I will get the photos off it. And I'll go, so what's your passcode? And they'll go, Oh, I've forgotten my passcode. And they'll be like, oh, great. So. CryJ, most likely a bad battery. Yeah, I'm thinking so. Because when I look at the... I can't... Oh, I've got the screws in it. I don't want to take the screws out this time of night. Um, it looks really crusty and nasty. And like I said, it was soaked in red wine. And I was able to take the MacBook main, the whole main board out, and put that through the ultrasonic, but I couldn't do that for the battery one. I tried lifting the daughter board off, but you can't seem to do it without first removing the main pack from the, uh, from the laptop itself. So it's... Can't win. So... So... Right. So the camera seems to be going good. Um, I will need to find a program that will let me adjust the parameters on it. But I think this is a case of when I shift to HDMI input, I'll be able to use the USB on this for adjusting the parameters of the camera. I've got a program on Linux that lets me adjust webcam parameters. And it's pretty good. Works with most of them. But it doesn't seem to be able to do anything with this one. So I'm kind of up the creek there. Uh, what else? The headset seems to be working pretty good. Was there any 
clipping or other stuff going on. Uh, I think now that I've got the positioning, it seems to be right. The gain is all right. Uh, it, it's coming together nicely. Yeah, if it runs off battery, it won't charge. Yeah, that's supposed to hurt. It, it shows me a full 100% battery, but it won't show me the charge symbol. Um, it flicks on to orange for a little bit with the MagSafe, but then comes back off. So it could be actually the MagSafe at fault too, because I've got a MagSafe 1 to 2 adapter, but that did come from Apple, so I'd expect it to work, but who knows. I just need to spend the money and get a proper MagSafe 2, like 95 or 85 watt adapter. Hey Aaron, yeah, I've noticed um, streaming's pretty rare. I think Lewis has pretty much got to the end of his run, whoops, end of his run with streaming. And I don't blame him. The guy's done a whole lot of stuff. I think he's off to do more interesting things for himself now. And I think that's great. Uh, Chris normally streams a fair bit. Jason from SDS, he's still mostly doing pre-recorded videos. I think with his schedule, it's a little bit harder for him to do a live stream. Uh, he's quite busy all the time, and then yeah, he's he's got his family life to deal with. Yeah. Oh, geez, Chris Long, I was just talking about you, and you just missed the end. Well, it's working, Chris. The phone is working. It's an iPhone five. It uh, has water damage for about two years, so, and we got it to work. I almost pulled the PMIC off, but uh, WorldFix stopped me, thank God, and it ended up just being a road cap that we found using free spray. What have we got here? Yeah, the battery status app the Mac will lie. I've noticed that much. <laughs> Busy and feeling like cuck. Makes streaming hard. Oh, well, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Chris. What, you got the wog, the bug, or whatever you want to call it over there? Anyway. But yeah, so we've got a fix, but the only trouble is now we don't know what the passcode is for this person because it's two years old. But I'll chase them up. Who knows? Maybe we're lucky and they are one of those people that keep the same passcode for everything. I did have a customer about a month ago. It was one of the, it was the first phone I fixed. It was a iPhone S five uh, S. It went for a swim in the swimming pool, and it had corroded completely. And I managed to get the data off that one. I had to pull off all sorts of things. Like strobe had to go. Um, chestnut had to be replaced. Uh, Misa, I think it was, had to be changed. But anyway, it ended up working, and I got the data off, and he fortunately always kept the same passcode, so we were able to get that one. Keep trying random passwords. That'll work for about five times, and then I won't be able to use it ever again. Oh, TCRS. Yeah. It seems like everybody now is turning up, just as I'm, just we're finished here. Uh, I'll get another, I'll get myself another one of these Logitech webcams, so you can get a broad view of the work area and then you won't have to look at my face so much uh, it'll make it a bit more meaningful it's like how what chris has got his setup as carrying some people all night uh, but yeah anyway so this is the start of things now add more bits of equipment i need to get the battery testers done um I don't know what I'm doing wrong at the moment. I've built up another one and it just sort of, it isn't working how I expect, which is really annoying to me because I've used the individual chips a lot previously in other projects. And for some reason when I'm bringing them together, they are arguing and they're not even on the same bus like I2C or anything like that. So I'm missing something. It's probably something to do with the ground planes when they shift, when you switch off the charger and things like that. Anyway, it, it's something for me to work out. Just make sure the cameras are on different USB hubs. They don't like working together. Uh, yeah, well, you see, you're on Windows, whereas I've found I've, all the cameras I've got here, including the webcam, well, that is on a different bus uh, hub port, I suppose, in the camera. I can just pick them out by their um, USB bus ID. I don't actually have to go by their name. 
because when I plug them in, they just get assigned like video nor video one, video two, and I so I'll take that one, please. But I do need to find a way to adjust the parameters on this one. Uh, anyway, okay, alright, that's it. It's getting late. I need to pretend to go to sleep, which really means I'm going to go lie in bed and watch Netflix for another couple of hours until about 4.30 and fall asleep finally as the sun comes up and then I'll get woken up at about 11 o'clock when the customers come along, hit the doorbell and I get up and my hair is all out of place and I'm looking a bit like uh, Rick out of Rick and Morty with the crazy hair and the dribble and everything like that and the pale face and pale legs and I wonder why customers don't come back a second time. <laughs> Yes, it's Ubuntu. There, it's. Um, I don't use Ubuntu with Unity or any of their GNOME interface. I just use it with Fluxbox, and Fluxbox is pretty dead set. You know, it, it isn't really much of a desktop manager at all. In fact, it's not. It's a window manager. Q4 for perfection. I need to put Q4 back. I'm not putting Q4 back. No, no, no. <laughs> I did do that on another one. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, there was another one I did the other day, and I put a new Q4 on. I had to reball it. And I have to say, 3D stencils, they really work nicely. And Chris, with the 3D stencils, I found uh, it does make it easier, but I can get away with using the wet paste still. Uh, whereas before, I definitely had to go with the dry paste. But at least with the smaller chips, I'm finding I can get away with wet paste. Oh, cues. G'day. Yeah, so sorry I've got to leave for all those who have just arrived, but um, hopefully now that I've sort of got things arranged a bit better, we'll be able to do things a bit more frequently. And hopefully the customers will keep bringing in interesting phones. Otherwise, I do have a pretty good collection of old ones that we can stuff around with, and there's no penalty if we damage them, so that takes the pressure off. No. You'll notice I don't really shake much when I'm doing this, and that's because I'm not freaking out about the person losing their data. So, hey, fire fan. All right. You all take care. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, have fun. <laughs> I'll find my mouse. No one likes wet paste. Chris, it worked fine. I will dry them out for the bigger stuff, but for the small nine ball ones, I'm going to go with... I'm just lazy. I did order a tub, and I'm going to leave that tub to dry out and not throw it out this time. I'll see you guys later.